Alright, what's going on guys? So, uh, in this video, um, I'm going to be discussing the new uh, set team up that is about to come out. Um, I believe it releases, um, it releases later in January, I don't remember the exact date off the top of my head. It releases on February 1st actually so February 1st the set comes out so we're going to talk about some of the cards that um, we don't know an exact set list yet but a lot of cards have been uh, revealed in Japan and so we know a lot of the cards that are going to be in it so the new mechanic of this set as uh, discussed by the name team up is that um, is that we've got these tag team Pokemon and GX. So first one here, Celebi and Venusaur. It's a big time 270 HP GX basic Pokemon. But the drawback to them is they give up three prizes when knocked out. So Celebi and Venusaur GX looks very interesting in combination with Venusaur from Shining Legends and some other um, Grass type energy acceleration, you could potentially pair it with Vika Volt as well. Um, it does some pretty good attacks. It reminds me of Venusaur EX from X and Y. Uh, 50 damage for Grass and 2 Colorless. And it is and it poisons, burns, and confuses your active your opponent's active Pokemon, which is pretty good. And then it is a flat 150 for 2 Grass, 2 Colorless. Then also for two grass, two colors, it does 180, and you heal all the damage off of it, but if it has at least one extra grass energy attached to it, so if it has three grass, two colorless, or five total energies, you will shuffle all the cards in your discard pile into your deck. So, um, yeah, the new mechanic with these also as well is that they all have an extra effect if you have extra energy attached, and shuffling Everything you're going to discard into your deck is crazy, as seen by Lysander's Trump card having to be banned because of being able to reuse the effect. I mean, that alone is going to make it pretty crazy to use around that GX attack. So then we've got some pre-evolutions. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to uh, cover pre-evolutions because they're kind of worthless. Um, I will cover ones that have abilities for the most part. Um, Kakuna reduces all damage done to it by 30. It has a grass energy attached, which is interesting. And then Beedrill, um, if this Pokemon has damage counters on it, both active Pokemon are knocked out, which is interesting. You're knocking yourself out, but you instantly knock out your opponent's active, which will be interesting against like the tag team GXs to trade three for one, or against EX and GX Pokemon to trade two for one. Uh, the second attack isn't really worth discussing, although it is a way to get damage onto yourself. Although you probably want to control when you put the damage on with something like Potown, Team Magra Secret Base and Expanded, Rainbow Energy, um, even Frozen City and Expanded. So then we have Parasect. Uh, put two damage counters on your opponent's Confused Pokemon between turns, which is pretty good. It adds a damage effect to that Confusion. Um, and then it confuses the active on its attack. But you're probably going to want to pair this with something like, um, like Nihil Vago GX to instantly confuse both the active when it comes down. Then we've got uh, Pinsir. Looks like, a, looks like it's not that good of a card. So we've got Charizard, which Charizard has been revealed in English, and we know it's coming out in this set. So its ability is, once during your turn, you may put 20 damage on this Pokemon, or 2 damage counters, then search your deck for 2 fire energy cards and attach them to this Pokemon. So it's like a double um, Typhlosion Prime, but only to itself. But its attack um, for 2 fire does 30, 30 damage, and you discard all the fire energy off of it, and it does 50 more times the amount of fire energy card you discard, which is pretty crazy, because a Fierce Fighting Spirit plus an energy attachment hits you for 180, which is 
a pretty good output. The thing is going to be streaming stage shoes, but you've got Meganium from Lost Thunder. Um, there's less item lock in standard, so rare candy. Um, bringing it out is less of an issue. And obviously you've got Naginado um, to accelerate energy from the discard. I almost think this this card is a better partner for Naginado than Blacephalon GX because Blacephalon throws energy to the Lost Zone where Naginado accelerates from the discard. So then, although this thing, this Pokemon, um, does have to, it does have to be on the active, but you could use something like Energy Switch or multi switch to move it over. So nine tails. So once during your turn, you can discard two fire energy from your hand and switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. So it's basically like a Lysander, but you can discard two fire, which is an interesting effect. I can see it used in aggressive decks that want to discard fire energy quickly and don't want to play a lot of supporters. Like Blacksmith decks and expanded. I could definitely see this. Combo with the blacksmith, you discard your two fire energy to play a lice, like to have a lysander effect, and then you use blacksmith, put those two energies onto whatever Pokemon you want. Uh, Rapid Dash, nothing to write home about. Moltres, probably not going to be good, but I wanted to touch on it because um, it is a reprint of one of my favorite uh, base set cards, base set era cards, really. So, it's first attack for our fire energy, Wildfire. Uh, you discard all the fire energy from this Pokemon, and you discard a card from your opponent's deck for each energy you discard in this way. Which, I think is a very interesting attack. I don't know how well it will do, because I don't know how well you'll be able to stream energy to be able to take, um, to be able to mill your opponent quickly. But it's definitely interesting. Um, it's a reprint from Moltres from Jungle, I believe. And so, uh, I don't know how well that deck did at the time, but it's definitely something wor worth looking into. So the next card is actually already out as a promo, but it was in the set that this uh, new set is going to be based off of. So I will cover it here. We got Magikarp and Waylord GX with a massive 300 HP. Uh, once again, breaking the record for most HP on a card. So, it's got, for 5 energy, you can do 180. And then, for a water energy, you do 10 damage. But if it has 7 extra water energy attached, so 8 water energies total, it does 100 damage to every one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, which is pretty amazing. A pretty amazing effect. But it is kind of situational if your opponent limits their bench. It's not as effective. And you do have to have a whopping 8 energy attached. So you definitely are going to want to pair this with Blastoise. Or run it on its own as like a stall deck. And it's definitely going to take the place of Waylord EX in the uh, Unknown Damage decks. I could still see the merits of a Waylord EX uh, stall deck with, with the beaches and all that. But this will definitely have its own variant of that as well, since it does have a lot more HP. The only thing is, is giving up an extra prize worth it for the extra HP. That's something that is going to have to be decided. So then Blastoise. So once during your turn, you can look at the top six cards of your deck, choose as many water energy cards as you find there, and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like, and shuffle the remaining cards into your deck. So this is pretty interesting. If you play a lot of water energy... In like a standard deck, um, this can be useful. I can definitely see this being part of a successful water deck since we've got a lot of good water Pokemon in stand or in the standard format. And expanded, I still think the old school boss switch is better with the Deluge, but that's just me. Um, Golduck, they reprinted the Amnesia attack on a Golduck. Uh, one water for 20, and then you choose when your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks, but it can't use that attack during your opponent's next turn. Um, I remember this was a card from Boundaries Crossed, and it came up a couple times. People considered using it when, like, Seismitoad EX was a big thing, so that your opponent couldn't use Quaking Punch. 
But right now, with Pokemon Ranger around, that's probably not worth it. And I don't, can't think of anything in Standard where shutting off one attack would hurt your opponent too much. Especially since decks now have a lot of switching outs, because it only applies to the active. Uh, we have a new Gyarados. So, reveal the top 7 cards of your deck. And it does 30 more damage times the number of water energy cards revealed. And then you shuffle those water energy back into your deck, but you discard the remaining cards. So it's definitely a risk-reward attack if you play a lot of energy. But decks like that haven't really done that well in the past. We've seen Heat more, Fail. We've seen Typhlosion have a little bit of success, but ultimately nothing major. Um, heck, we had Swamp or DX. That didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, Lapras could be interesting with the Hydro Pump for 10 damage plus 30 more for the number of water energy attached to it. That could be good in uh, Archie Stoist decks to have a non uh, EXGS attacker that does a lot of damage. We got Arctic Lou. Um. While this is your active Pokemon, whenever your opponent plays a supporter from your, their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to you, your benched water Pokemon. So this is definitely something that is definitely going to be a situational like wall type card. Uh, I've seen cards like this pop up in Don fan decks, like the hit and run type decks. But there's not really a water Pokemon that does that, so I don't really see this working out very well. Then we've got the good old Pikachu and Zekrom GX. This was the card that they revealed to show off the tag team mechanic. So we've got full blitz for three lightning energy doing 150 damage. Then search your deck for three lightning energy cards attached into one of your Pokemon, which is insane. That's one of the best energy acceleration attacks. Plus it does 150 damage base. And then you've got tag bolt GX for three lightning energy doing 200 damage. And if it has at least three extra lightning energy attached, it does 170 damage to a bench Pokemon. So you can definitely see the full blitz onto itself. And then comboing up with the tag bolt, taking a bunch of prizes. You can definitely win the game with that strategy if you pull it off well enough. You can KO an EX or GX basic Pokemon with full blitz. Like say Tapu Lele. And then use Tag Bolt GX and knock out something, knock out a GX or EX, and then knock out a Lele, Shaman, whatever on the bench, and you win the game, which is pretty pretty good, I think. And then we've got a Lolan Golem. Um, so it's got choose as many Lightning Energy from your bench Pokemon as you like and move them to those Pokemon. The attack, this attack does. 20 damage has a number of cards move this way. The Super Zap Cannon is one of those big, way too heavy attacks. Lolan Golem could be interesting. Um, especially something like Pikachu and Zekrom GX, where you could move those 6 Lightning Energy over, but I don't know that a Stage 2 is worth it for that type of attack when you have to move a bunch of energy up onto it and then have to find a way to get them back so then we've got electrode so when you evolve into it you can move your lightning energy around on the field which is a good situational use i could see this card having some use in different decks just depending on um what they are so then we've got gengar and mimikyu gx so it has Poltergeist, uh, your opponent reveals their hand, and it does 50 damage for each trainer card you find there. Which we've seen that attack work in the past, combo with stuff like Vile Plume to lock items. Although that was back when train like what we know and those items were the only trainers and then supporters were their own thing as were stadiums. But this could be better since now all types of train like you've got items supporters and stadiums that count toward that um toward that counter i could definitely see some sort of crazy like total lock deck 
and then you just come in and sweep with this. Play something like Vile Plume, Stoutland, and uh, Nine Tails from Primal Clash. Lock all three um, types of trainers, and then you just come in and dominate it with Gengar and Mimikyu because you would still have stadiums and items locked. They would just be able to play a supporter. You could also then throw in Garbodor from Guardians Rising because if they then have like a Sycamore to discard all those trainers and items, you can punish them with Garbodor. So then we've got Nitto Queen. So once during the turn, you can search your deck for a Pokemon and put it into your hand, excluding Pokemon GX and EX. So I think that that drawback alone, plus the fact that that's not a super strong ability, makes this not really worth it. Uh, Power Lair is interesting. 10 damage plus 50 more damage times the number of evolutions on your bench. I could definitely see that um, working out with Nitto Queen as your big attacker. And then some other evolutions, like evolution support Pokemon, like a little bit Ninetales, GX, Zeb Strika, um, really any sort of like support Pokemon that is an evolution. So Nitto King, uh, we got Drag Off, uh, choose on your opponent's bench Pokemon, switch with their active, and then it does 50 damage to that Pokemon. Uh, not a super good attack. And then... For a Psychic and two colors, does 100, and if you have Nidoqueen Queen on your bench, it does 100 more. So that could be another pairing with the Nidoqueen Queen from above. And you got Tentacruel, so uh, your opponent's active is Poisoned and Confused, and then uh, Psychic and two colors does 70, and then prevent all damage done by Ultra Beasts. So I don't know how well this is going to work out. Um, this is definitely a meta call type Pokemon. If you're going to play against a lot of Ultra Beasts, then you play this. But honestly, this is worse, in my opinion, than the Jolteon EX, Lysion EX um, from the X and Y block because those are basics. And this is an evolution, although it's not a two prizer. You still have to evolve into it, which is kind of not worth it. You do only have to commit two basic energy as compared to second energy C and expanded with dimension valley but in expanded ultra beasts aren't all that prevalent besides buzzwool and you can pretty much beat buzzwool with any other psychic pokemon anyway so i don't really see the point of that so we've got muck uh don't remove poison from your opponent's pokemon when they evolve or de-evolve which can be useful in some situations, but a four retreat cost, probably not going to uh, be worth it. And then it does 40 damage for a psychic and then poisons, but you put two damage counters in between. So I could see this with like Saviper doing a bunch of damage between turns on poison and then they can't get it off without retreating or anything like that. But you might want to combo that with something like Raichu to paralyze them so they can't move out of the active. So then we've got um, Starmie is interesting. So one energy does 40 damage and search your deck for three water or psychic energy cards and attach them to one of your bench Pokemon. So it's pretty good energy acceleration for either water decks or psychic decks just depending on what, uh, what you want to play it in. And that is a free attack for Dimension Valley decks and Expanded. So I can definitely see this in the Garb Toolbox decks. Um, so we got Mr. Mime. So your opponent can't return any Pokemon with damage counters on them or any cards attached to these Pokemon to their hand. So this is definitely a interesting card since we have the prevalence of Acerola in Standard and Expanded but mostly standard. Um, personally, Ace Roll is one of the most annoying cards to me because so many times I play X that is just sort of a knockout, and then you're playing against Zorwork GX, and then just play an Ace Roll, and they trade four times, and they just steamroll you. And this would just completely block Ace Roll. I mean, Zorwork does have Muck, but I could definitely see this annoying them, just like Ace Roll annoys me, so this card gets an upvote for me. 
Uh, Jinx. Nothing crazy. Mankey, Primeape. Primeape. Uh, Rack is an interesting attack. Uh, 80 plus 80 more to the stadium in play, and then discard that stadium. Could be interesting. With all the damage boosters like Diancy Prism Star, Reggie Rocky X and Expanded, Strong Energy and Expanded, all that stuff. So then we've got Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. So Hitmonchan, we'll talk about first. Uh, he has 30 damage, and then you switch with one of your bench Pokemon. So it's, it's like a basic Don fan from Plasma Storm, but it does 10 less damage. And then Hitmonlee, um, you can only use this attack if your Hitmonchan used Hit No Way during the last turn, and it does 90 damage to one of your bench, bench Pokemon. So you can definitely see an interesting combo with this. Uh, hit and run into a wall, then special combo, and then kind of rinse and repeat, and you can snipe, do some damage uh, to the active, take some cheap prizes. You can definitely see this be an interesting deck. So then we've got Omastar. So this, and the QBU tops that's coming up next, are a reason why many people are calling for a Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick ban and expanded. So Omastar. If you have less Pokemon in play than your opponent, your opponent can't play items from their hand. So you can play Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick, get this card right out, and block your opponent's items. And then we have Kabutops. While this Pokemon is active, your opponent can't play supporter cards on their hand. So once again, Maxi's this out, bring an active, and you have a Stoutland with a lot less work, which is insane. So, there's a lot of people calling for a Maxi's ban. And also, side note, I don't think a Maxi's ban would constitute an Archeops unban because Ditto Prism Star exists to get a turn two Ar Archeops regardless with little work. So, I don't see Archeops being unbanned anytime soon, unless they ban Ditto for some reason. So next we have Latios and Latios GX. So it does a big 240 damage, discard 3 energy, and it takes a water, 2 psychic, and a colorless. And then we have Arrow Unit GX for a psychic. And you attach 5 basic energy cards for energy card piles to your Pokemon in any way you like. So this is going to be a good big energy acceleration Pokemon, kind of like Solgaleo GX. But with Psychic or some other type of energy and you have to get the energy in the discard. But then if this Pokemon has at least one energy extra attached to it, prevent all effects of attacks including damage done to it during opponent's next turn. So yeah, this would be pretty crazy. Um, uh, put Putting two energies on it. Um, Accelerating some energy and then preventing all damage done to a 250 HP big time Pokemon. So then a Lone Executor looks pretty interesting. So for a for free, you can draw until you have six in your hand and discard as many cards as you like before you draw. So that's pretty good if you have a dead hand to bail you out. But then the second attack is very interesting. So for a grass and a colorless, which can be fulfilled for a double dragon and expanded. You discard as many execute from your hand as you like, and it does 60 damage for each card discarded. And of course, this can combo with the Propagation Execute from Plasma Freeze, which will let you do 240 damage every turn, which is, you know, pretty good. Now, the only thing with it is Execute is another card that many people uh, have their eye on the Ban Hammer for, but it may or may not happen, so we'll see. Um, Dratini, uh, nothing to write home about there. So, Dragonite, once during your turn, you may search your deck for a supporter, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. Uh, I could definitely see this. Um, uh, Pidgeot back in Fire Red and Leaf Green had the same ability, and it was one of the best support Pokemon at the time. So, I could see this seeing play in like Meganium decks where you flood the field with stage twos. Um, but yeah, that's really the main usage I see for it. So then we got Eevee and Snorlax GX. So 
for a colorless, you attach an energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. For four energy, it does 120. And then if your opponent's active is an evolution, it does 120 more. And then for four energy for your GX, it does 210. And then if it has one extra energy attached, you draw until you have 10 cards in your hand. So once again, another solid Pokemon that I could definitely see the deck being built around. I'm honestly intrigued to maybe try something in the vein of the old Mega Kangaskhan Aromatis decks with this, with this, and maybe something like either Aromatis again, or Lunala GX, or even Golduck Break. But it really just depends. Um, especially since this thing can accelerate special energies, I can definitely see a deck based around this working out. So that's something that is going to be explored, I think. So speaking of Pidgeot, so Pidgeotto, um, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them in your hand, and put the other one at the bottom of your deck. So it's a better acro bike on a 60 HP Pokemon that can be searched out with Professor Elm's lecture. Um, so I could see that working out as a good support Pokemon. Uh, Pidgeot, though, nothing crazy. Although it does have a three energy attack where you return your opponent's active and all cards attach it to their hand, which is always something that people will try to explore. So then Persian is very interesting. So it does 20 damage for one energy, but then you have your opponent reveal at their hand and you discard cards from your opponent's hand until they have four cards in hand. So this is gonna be pretty good against like mill decks, like unknown hand decks, all those decks that try to win by getting 35 cards in their hand or try to win by milling out and just keep stacking cards in their hand. This will function similar to Durant from Flashfire, which was used in Waylord decks um, once upon a time uh, when I played Waylord at US Nationals in 2016. Um, I played a Durant in it because um, what people would do is they would just draw and pass, and then you could get rid of their hand if they just did that. So then we've got... Uh, Farfetch isn't anything crazy, now there's Kangaskhan. Uh, Tauros is interesting. For DC, it does 10, plus 10 more damage, times the number of damage counters on all of your Tauros and Tauros GX, which could be pretty good. Uh, Aerodactyl, nothing crazy. Uh, escape Rope Reprint. Uh, Judge Whistle is pretty interesting. So, you choose one. You either draw a card, or put a Judge from your discard pile into your hand. So, definitely, I can see people playing this to have like a 56 card deck. Like, you just play four of these, and then you can just draw a card whenever you want. I can see this played in super fast decks. Um, as just a way to thin out their deck. And then the judge option probably won't get used that much. So, um, but it's there. Uh, unidentified fossils, a reprint, as is Ultra Ball, Rare Candy. Pokemon Communication is coming back. It was last printed in black and white base set. One of my favorite cards personally, so I'm kind of glad that it's coming back. Because I was worried that it would get rotated out of Expanded. So you reveal a Pokemon in your hand and put it on top of your deck. And then you search your deck for a Pokemon and put it into your hand. So this gets played a lot in like Zoroark decks. So you can just, you always have like a free Pokemon search because you could just put an Execute back in the deck and then search out it, search it out later to re-discard it. So then we've got Muscle Pad. So if it is attached to a Pokemon with four retreat cost, it gets plus 50 HP. So, four retreat cost Pokemon uh, are pretty common. All the, most of the tag team GXs, we're going to go back up. A lot of the tag team GXs have four retreat cost. So, as we see here, we've got Celebi and Venusaur has a four retreat cost. We've got Magikarp and Waylord with a four retreat cost. So, we can get a massive 350 hit points, which is insane. And then we've got Pikachu and Zekrom has a 3, so I want to apply to it. Gengar Mimikyu has a 2. Uh, 
Latias and Latias and Latios has one. Eevee and Storlax has four, so we can get to 320. So yeah, so definitely some of the big time HP Pokemon can abuse this. Weathered EX can use it as well. So then Erica's Hospitality. So you can't play this card if you have six or more cards in your hand. And then you draw a card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. So I can definitely see people abusing this against like Skyfield decks. Because you could draw nine cards if they have a full bench. So we have a Judge reprint to go along with the Judge Whistle. A Cynthia reprint, which is pretty good. We have Brock's Grit coming back to Standard. Uh, it was printed in Evolutions, so I just recently rotated out. Uh, it shuffles six in any Pokemon of any combination of Pokemon and basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. So it's like a um, it's like a double rescue structure, but it can get energies as well. So then Sabrina's suggestion: look at your opponent's hand, choose a supporter you find there, and use the effect of that supporter as the effect of this card. Um, this effect is pretty strong. Um, or has been strong in the past on cards like Smeargle from the Heart Gold Soul Silver era. But I don't think as a supporter itself, you I would rather just play the supporter that I would that I would want to play anyway. Smeargle was good because you could use it in addition to your supporter. But I wouldn't take up your supporter for the turn on whatever your opponent happens to have in their hand. So we have Bill's Analysis. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Choose two trainer cards you find there. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Um, another kind of situational card. I could see a case for this one. If you play a lot of like a certain trainer that is kind of dependent in your deck. But all in all, I don't think it's super great. And we have Lavender Town. Uh, once during each player's turn, that player may look at their opponent's hand. I love this card personally. I love effects that let you look at your opponent's hand um, because I love control decks and this is going to be great for those to be able to like look at your opponent's hand. I can definitely see this in the crazy like Exodia decks like before you delink you can delink this away but beforehand you can see what cards they have so you can see what they're going to keep and decide whether you want a peaking red card or not. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be something that I'm definitely going to enjoy. So we have Rudian Forest. Uh, once during each player's turn, that player may discard a card from their hand, then search their deck for a basic energy card, reveal it, and put it into their hand, and then shuffle their deck. I don't think this is strong enough on a stadium card, in my opinion. I think there are better stadiums out there. I mean, there might be some deck that can use this. I can see Archie's Toys may be using this to thin their hand out and get energies, but I really can't see a lot of decks doing this. I don't think discarding a card is worth searching for a basic energy. So I guess a lot of the decks that abuse Execute are um, Zoroark decks, which use DCE. I can see a Lolan Executor using this though to discard a hand, to discard a card, like discard an Execute, grab a basic energy. Or discard a basic energy that they haven't discarded yet to grab another one. So an Aqua Patch reprint, Field Blower reprint, Choice Band reprint, Volkner reprint. So then we also have the EVGX starter set, which I think this may be. I think these cards are coming out as boxes soon, maybe. Or they might be in the set, I can't remember. So we've got Flareon GX. Um, so it does. 30 for one energy, attach three fire energy cards from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like, which is pretty good. Then we got Crimson Flame for 190, discard two fire, and then its chase attack is 20 damage for each fire energy in your discard pile. So all in all, a pretty good card as a whole. I can definitely see it being used. And then we have a Porygon GX. Once during your turn, heal 30 damage from your active water Pokemon. Always a good ability. Um, we got Hydro Pump, 40 plus 30 more. Um, I don't think this is the best. I, it's a good attack, but I think there are better attacks out there. And then heal all damage from all of your water Pokemon for water energy. 
I could see that potentially being used, but overall, this one is kind of underwhelming in my opinion. Then we have Jolteon GX, uh, 30 damage plus 30 damage to a bench Pokemon. Um, all that's that type of attack is always good. Then it does 110 for Lightning and Colors, which is pretty good. And then for the same cost, it still does 110. But you prevent all damage and effects from attacks done to this Pokemon during its next turn. So then we have um, EVGX. So there's two different arcs of it. Um, during your turn, you can evolve this Pokemon into any Pokemon that evolves from Eevee. So basically, this is like another Eevee. So it's like basically you can play eight Eevees. And then this also does 100 for three energy. And then GX attack lets you put three cards or discard into your hand. So I can definitely see this in some sort of crazy like Evolution toolbox deck. I can definitely see this being played in, like a Flareon deck to have extra basics. Um, yeah, overall, they're definitely pretty good with the mechanic. So you have EV and EVGX. There's actually three different arts of it, I guess, for the three different. Things. So then this, also the GX Ultra Shiny, um, is coming out as well. So we got Shaman Prism Star. Um, does 30 damage times in order energy attached to your Pokemon in play. Not the best, but could see some play. Uh, the Alolan Marowak is a, is a psychic type reprint of the Fire one from, I believe... I can't remember what set that was in. I want to say... Ultra Prism, but I can't remember. Uh, the Cosmog, so it prevents damage done to it what's on the bench, which is pretty good. Cosmoam, nothing great. And we got Lycanroc GX, another new Lycanroc GX. We're now on the third one now. Um, which I guess is because of the three different forms. So when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you can discard an energy from your opponent's active. So this is a much better uh, Crawdaunt from Primal Clash, which that saw some play in some like annoying decks that like abuse this ability. Then it does um, 120 for fighting and two colors. And then it does 30 damage as a number of energy in your opponent's discard for fighting for GX attack. So this could definitely be annoying. Then we've got Alolan Ninetales, a fairy reprint of the ice type from Burning Shadows. Prevents all effects of attacks done by GX and EXs. Then a fairy reprint of Mimikyu. Um, from, I believe, Guardians Rising. Dragon reprint of a Lone Executor. From Ultra Prism. Or a lot, I can't remember what set this came out in. Either Ultra Prism or Celestial Storm. So then, uh, we've got Water and Grass Memories for Silvali GX. Um, we got a fairy charm for ultra beasts, um, preventing all damage done by ultra beasts, ultra beasts, GXs and EXs. So we got Ingo and Emmett. So you look at the top card of your deck and return it. Then choose one of the following. Discard your hand and draw five or discard your hand and draw the bottom five card of your deck. So let you see your top deck and you can either draw from the top or bottom of your deck. This could be good in combination with a Ranguru from Ultra Prism, being able to put three cards on the bottom of your deck and then draw them with this Ingo and Emmet. Overall, not a super great supporter, but it has its uses. So we have Morgan. So in order to play this card, you have to discard one Dana, one Evelyn, and one Nita from your hand. Look at the top 12 cards of your deck and attach as many energy cards you find there to your Pokemon any way you like. And shuffle the remaining ones back into your deck. So this is a big, like, high-risk, high-risk supporter. You have to discard three cards from your hand, three specific cards, like one of each, like a different card. So it's very situational, and it's even more situational because you have to find energy out of 12 cards, which is... So it's super situational, but in the right deck, if you can make it consistent, is super good. So we have Dana. 
Um, if your opponent's active at stage two, search your deck for two cards and put them into your hand. This is pretty good since there's a lot of decks that play stage twos now. Even decks that normally weren't known for playing stage twos are now playing stuff like Swampert and all of that. And there's a lot of decks that are based on stage twos, so this card could definitely be powerful. Then we have Evelyn. If your opponent's active at stage one, draw four cards. This one, definitely too situational and really not good enough. Then Nita, you can only play this card if your opponent's active as a basic, shuffle energy from your opponent's active into their deck. This one isn't bad, it's very average. Be if I, uh, in Expanded, never gonna see play. Team Flavor Grunt is not situational and better than this. But, I could see this being played in standard, since there's not a lot of support or energy disruption besides Plumeria, which makes you discard two cards from your hand to play it. So we have Wonder Labyrinth Prism Star. So it makes all Pokemon attacks except for Fairy Pokemon cost colorless more. And then it has the Prism Star Stadium rule where it prevents all effects from items and support cards done to it. So it can only be removed by a counter stadium. You can't play Field Blower to get rid of it or anything else that would remove a stadium. Besides effective attacks, like an attack that discards a stadium would also discard it. Um, and then I believe Dark Order is also in this set as well. There's a lot. Japan does this weird thing where they release like a bunch of mini sets and we get them as a huge set every three months. So we've got Zapdos, Assault Thunder, um, 10 damage, and then 70 more if it became your active this turn. Could be kind of useful. Uh, Ampharos GX. So for so does 30 damage for one energy, and you put all of your Electra Power from your discard pile into your hand. The Electra Power is a pretty good card. I can definitely see you doing something like playing all four Electra Power to do 120 more, doing 150 for one energy, putting them back, and resetting. And then when you take a big knockout, you can do 150 for two Lightning. Discard all any energy attached. And then Electrical GX lets you search your deck for seven Pokemon and put them into your hand. Which, um, it's kind of situational, and you really want to be set up by the time you get this Pokemon out. But you never know. In the right deck, that could that could work. Then we have a Blitzel that lets you search your deck for two Electro Power. We have Zebstrika, which has Raid. Uh, 30 plus 90 more for it evolved from Blitzel, but it costs 2 energy. But I can definitely see this being played in the vein of Lucario GX, Golisopod GX. Um, Emolga lets you search your deck for a Nuzzle Pokemon and put into your hand, which is pretty situational, but in the weird like Raichu GX decks and the Pachirisu like, Snuggly Generator stuff, you never know. If that deck ever becomes a big thing, this card could be a big thing. Uh, Joltik, nothing crazy. Um, Galvantula, um, it prevents effects from items of support and supporters done to it, which is always pretty good. And that lets you put a card from your discard pile into your hand and do 40 for lightning energy. Uh, Heliolisk, not that great. Tapu Koko Prism, pretty good. Uh, lets you, if it's on your bench, attach. One lightning energy from a discard to two of your bridge Pokemon. Then put this into the Lost Zone. So, um, yeah, this is a pretty good energy acceleration. You can drop it down, put down two lightning energies, and it goes right into the Lost Zone. Then we've got a Lillian Muck. Um, interesting ability lets you discard... Um, Item cards off of your opponent's top six, and then shuffle the rest in. Uh, Tyranitar uh, does 30 to every Pokemon, which could be useful. And then it does 130 plus 100 more if your opponent's active is a EX or GX. Uh, Mighty Anna, nothing crazy. Absol makes a uh, basic Pokemon have one more retreat. And then it does 30 more for your opponent's active retreat cost. Um, nothing crazy, but it could happen. 
and then Spirit Tomb lets you search your deck for four Pokemon and discard them. This could be an interesting opening attack in Vespaquin or Night March. Uh, Zoro, definitely not the best Zoro out there. Uh, Zoroark, uh, lets you do 20 damage to the number of Pokemon in your discard, but you can't do more than 200 damage. So it only counts up to 10. But this can still be an interesting attack. Um, I don't think Zoroark and GX decks will start adding Dark Energy to play this. They certainly could. But I think this could be an interesting deck on its own. And you can still play Zoroark GX as a supporting Pokemon to trade away Pokemon and all of that. Uh, Mandibuzz. Not the best. Pangaro. To discard two cards from your opponent's hand, which could be good in some situations. Uh, Veltal, uh, does the standard derail, one energy for 30, discard special energy. Uh, Hoopa GX, uh, we'll go over this one. So if you search your deck for two cards and put them into your hand, always good. We've seen Sylveon GX with a similar effect work. Uh, does 160 for three dark. Um... which is pretty good. And then it's GX attack. Uh, you choose six of your opponent's Pokemon, EX or GX, and then it does 30 damage times that. So basically what happens is, right, you can choose the same Pokemon twice. So like if they have one Pokemon, EX or GX in play, it does 180 damage to that. And then if they have two or more, you can split the damage however you want, but you basically get 180 damage to spread around like 30, 30 damage increments to six times to Pokemon. Then Incineroar GX. Um, once during your turn, you can put three damage counters on this Pokemon, search your deck for three Darker Synergy and attach them, which is pretty good. It's like the uh, Charizard from earlier, but it's a triple version. And then it does 130, discard a special energy, and then. GX attack does 10 plus 50 more times the number of damage counters. So it would basically do 160 starting out. Um, if you did one Scar Charge. So then Skarmory. Uh, not that great. Jirachi is interesting. So if it's your active, you can look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose a trainer card to put into your hand. And then Jirachi goes to sleep. Could be a good like starting uh, support Pokemon. Uh, and then there's a Bronzor that can evolve during your first turn if you go second, which would be really good for Bronzong Phantom Forces decks. That Bronzong, definitely not worth writing about. Uh, Ferrothorn, not that good. By Sharp. Not the best. Cobalion GX. So we've got. So it lets Metal Energy. Pokemon with Metal Energy not be affected by special conditions. Um, then it does 50 plus 60 more after the stadium in play. And then. Um, basically. So GX attack. Your opponent's Pokemon can attack. So it basically lets you be immune. Unless they play Ranger or something crazy like that. But it makes you immune from attacks. So. That's always good. And then we've got Aegis Slash. Um, it reduces damage done to it by 40. Still probably not worth it. Unless you play like a crazy like Dew Blade deck from Primal Clash. But I don't know about that. Then there's a, um, not a reprint, but a like remake of the Klefki from X and Y. Ooh, we might have a flash fire. Um, it makes it so your metal Pokemon's resistance is now minus 40. So that could come up useful in certain situations. We have Electra Charger. So it lets you uh, shuffle in an Electra Power. Um, you flip two coins and you shuffle an Electra Power in for each head. And then we obviously get an Electra Power reprint. Uh, Dangerous Drill. It's got a dark Pokemon. And then discard a special energy, a tool, or a stadium. So this is pretty good. It's like a uh, Zerosic, but you have to discard a dark Pokemon. 
So obviously dark decks are going to love this. Uh, Zoroark decks, you know, it's going to be pretty crazy. Zoroark decks being able to discard extra cards. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Metal Goggles lets you... Um, not only does it reduce Metal Pokemon um, damage by 30, but it also lets you prevent all effects of attacks and abilities that put damage counters on. So it's a kind of a better Metal Frying Pan because not only does it reduce the damage by 30, but it also makes it so that they can't put damage counters down. So it kind of stops like spread decks. So we've got Nanu. Let you switch a basic darkness Pokemon from your discard pile with one of your Pokemon in play. So it's like a Ninja Boy, but you can only switch to a dark type basic Pokemon. So then Jasmine. Uh, you search your deck for a metal Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, then shuffle your deck. If you went second and it's your first turn, you can t take five middle Pokemon instead, which is pretty good. I can see this is a, like a combo in a Bronzong deck to bring out some Bronzongs early with that Bronzor that lets them evolve on turn one. And then we got another Prism Star Stadium in the good old Black Market Prism Star. Uh, this card could cause some problems though with uh, Sableye and like if you combo, combo that with Ninetales. Um, if either player knocks out a darkness Pokemon with any darkness energy attached to them, that player takes one less prize card. So this is like life do for Sableye, but a stadium. So it'll always be in play. Um, and then you can bring it nine tails so that they can never count in your stadium. So that, this card could be a problem with Sableye, but I don't think it'll be too bad. We got some promo cards here that uh, I don't know if any of these are coming out now none of them really look that great the new Zygar GX but it's really not that good I'm just going to kind of scroll through them I believe this new Mr. Mime GX is coming uh, it has the magic odds ability to go with the magic evens from the Mr. Mime from Celestial Storm um it prevents damage um, that is an odd number up to 250. Uh, and then it has the same attacks as the other Mr. Mime GX. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't think... I don't know if these cards are coming out um, now or later, but these are different random... Uh, cards. We got some. Uh, we got a fidget spinner coming out. Energy spinner lets you search your deck for a basic energy. But if you went second into your first turn, you can search your three basic energy. Um, but yeah, besides that, I don't know if any of these cards are coming out. They might be, they might not be. I'll probably do a more in depth set review once the official. Um, set list comes out but for now this is what we got uh thanks to limitless tcg for having these translations up they always do a super good job getting the translations out quick and they're always accurate so yeah um so i'm definitely gonna plan to get some videos up on this channel um playing some games on tcg1 um i'm gonna probably play some games with some current format decks and then once Team Up is released on there, we will be able to get rocking and rolling with those cards. But for now, I'm going to sign off.